Good morning, hope everyone's at home safe and well. Um, firstly, I'd just like to say um, welcome to your first online art lesson. And secondly, I've had some really positive feedback regarding some of the work that you've been producing for art in your work packs on the creative lettering. Um, if any of you are happy to do so, please take pictures of the work that you've produced and send them in so we can celebrate some of that work and post it on our Instagram um, page. That'd be brilliant. So what I've decided to do is continue in that kind of theme, doing the different types of creative lettering. And we're going to start looking at graffiti artists this week. So today, your learning objectives are going to be to describe the origins of graffiti art, to explore elements of graffiti style lettering, and to design and create your own tag. So the key words that we're going to be looking at today are graffiti, propaganda, opinion, medium, and tags. Then if we look at the bigger picture, when we come back after lockdown, some of the artists that we've looked at, we're going to start producing some large scale pieces of work in the style of people such as Keith Haring, Banksy and Shepherd Fairy. Okay, so if we look at the origins of graffiti, graffiti comes from the Italian words graffita, which means scratched drawing. So graffiti has existed since ancient times, with examples going right back to ancient Greece and the Roman Empire. So graffiti can be um, anything from simple scratched drawings, like the one at the top, which is an early example, and that is just scratched into stone. That's a side pro profile. Um, and then if you have a look at the bottom image, now you see these are more modern day styles of graffiti art where it's much larger scale and really elaborate and bright colours. And a lot of the time, graffiti now is recognised as using spray paints as the main medium. Okay, so here's an example of ancient Greek graffiti. So this one here is actually the first known example of modern style graffiti. So this is actually in Turkey, which was known then as ancient Greece. So if you look in the bottom corner, you can see um, a portrait, possibly a gentleman, and this has just been scratched into marble. Just to add, during that period of time, if you used to have a portrait done, that was only reserved for people that were really important in society. So somebody like really high up, so whether like now it may be prime minister, somebody with lots of money, somebody with a really good job. So that essentially would recognise that they are quite high up in society. Okay, so this one's really different. So this one here is an example of um, graffiti produced in Italy, ancient Rome. So... Like now, when we have somebody running for pre presidency or prime minister, all of the politicians have these electoral rallies and campaigns where they go around to different towns and they're filmed trying to drum up people's votes. Okay, Back in those days, like ancient Rome was the first people that um, invented democracy. And they didn't have TVs and all of these fancy ways of going around and seeing the public. So what they simply did was write propaganda messages on walls and that was classed as their form of graffiti okay so it's generally recognized by being written in red or black and mainly in capital letters so if you think about this kind of graffiti it's completely different to how we would imagine graffiti nowadays okay so here is an example of main graffiti and um, this one's from 700 ad this one was found in a mayor's palace so again if you have a look um at the image on the pot on the um, graffiti it's actually a side profile of um, a person so again just reinforcing that idea this was also used for somebody who was really high up in um, society so again they're living in a palace so they're obviously somebody important okay so for your first task what I want you to do is write down the following words and if you can put down what you think that they mean so the first word graffiti Propaganda, opinion, medium, and tags. Okay, so you can pause this while you write those down. Okay, so do you think that graffiti is right? Do you think that it is okay to spray paint, paint, or put names on walls, public transport, etc.? For example, this piece of work here, do you think that somebody has just gone and randomly spray painted on it? 
or do you think that he's been paid for through the council? OK, so this piece of work that you can see here um, on public transport in America, this was actually paid by the council. OK, and this was to stop other people from graffitiing on there. I mean, as you can see on the top part underneath the number of the train, somebody's actually gone and done that anyway. But there is an unwritten rule that if you graffiti, if there is already a piece of graffiti work, then you shouldn't graffiti over the top of it. And that's meant to be an unwritten rule, if you like, amongst graffiti artists. OK, so would you say that any of these here are vandalism or would you class them as street art? OK, I want you to just label which ones do you think is vandalism and which one is street art. If you need to pause that, then do so. OK, so this first one here, you can see that this one here is obviously vandalism. OK, there hasn't been any care done with it. It's not been thought out. And it looks like numerous people have come along at some point with a can of spray paint and thought, oh, I'm going to spray all over this wall. I'm going to put my name on it. or I'm going to have a go at doing like a basic drawing. Um, if you look at the second one. OK, this one hasn't been commissioned by council, but it is somebody that's a lot more accomplished than what's been drawn on the first building. Um, you can see there's some bright colours going on there, there's some kind of design, there's some kind of pattern, but even still, they're just still layering up over people's work with name tags. OK, the bottom one, again, this was one that was commissioned by the council, this one's an American one, so this one here has been planned and well thought out. OK, so if we look at graffiti art, graffiti, street art, defines art that's usually created in public lo locations. A lot of the time it's created illegally and it often, which we're going to have a look at soon in the next art, in the artist that we're going to be looking at over the next couple of weeks, has a political or a social, social message or meaning. And that's because it can get out to a really wide audience. Lots of people will see this we'll see the piece of work. If you think about if a piece of um, artwork was in an art gallery, the amount of people that's going to come in the art gallery and see that is a lot smaller than something that you'd have on the subway, for instance, on the, or on the side of a big building in the city centre. OK, so I've just added this slide in for you to come back to once you start doing your own tasks. So you can use this to look at for inspiration if you like. So there's lots of different really bright colours. It's quite vibrant. OK, so this is what you're going to be doing. So if we look at the graffiti, if we look at graffiti tags in the 1960s, teenagers in New York began writing the names on neighbourhood walls and um, they didn't write their own names. They wrote nicknames and this kind of created a street identity. OK, so it was their own identity in different areas. So gang members would use this to mark out their territory with tags. OK, and these um, gangs would be recognised by using different colours, etc. So they didn't consider themselves as graffiti artists. They were simply writers and that's what they call themselves. So this all came about in the 1960s in New York. So what I want you to do today is I want you to have a go at creating your own tag. OK, so what I want you to do is I put a couple of examples on here. So what I want you to do is to make your characters as thick as possible, OK? And I want you to use your whole piece of paper. So the characters need to be thick so that you've got loads of space for adding colour to it, adding design to it. Or you can even make it 3D, OK, by adding detail around the edges. If you want, I'm just going to move myself. OK, if you want, you can overlap your characters like this one at the bottom. OK, where they're quite scrunched up and I've got some more examples if you want to look at those um, further on in the presentation. OK, so for higher marks, to get this, you'll need to start adding turn to your work. So turn is a range of colours. OK, so it can go from really light colour through to a darker colour. So if you can see on the bottom example, it starts off yellow, goes through an orange and finally you get to this kind of like burnt ready colour down at the bottom. OK, so... If you don't, sorry, if you don't have access to colours, you can create turns simply by using pencils. OK, so you could start off by applying less pressure, making your pencil colouring really light and then adding more pressure as you get further down to create a darker shade. OK, please feel free to look on the Internet for different examples of lettering if you want to. That's perfectly fine. 
Also, I've added some extra examples on here. So like I say, on this first um, set of lettering, the numbers are really bulked together in the mid 3D, okay? On the second one, you can see how they've been mid 3D with the darker lines out at the back. So once you've completed this task, please feel free to add any extra designs around the background or you can add motifs like on this one here, they've added the love heart, add as much detail as possible to it and please take photographs of your work by all means and send them into our Instagram account um, and we're quite happy to post them. As I say, it'd be really great to celebrate some of your work. And finally, I'm just going to go back onto here so that you can have a look at some of the examples of the different types of colours and designs that you see in a lot of the modern day graffiti. Okay, so finally, we're really looking forward to seeing some of the brilliant work that some of you are producing. So take care and we will speak to you soon. Thank you.